One. Hey. So your warm up is a continuity question. Yes, sir. Do you want to know why country? I'm sorry. Do you want to know why outdoorsmen hate roads? Why do outdoorsmen hate roads? I said it wrong. What is an outdoorsman's least favorite thing of ice cream? Roads. Rocky Road. There it is. There you go. Nah, good. All right. We want to know if this function is continuous at negative two. Negative two is a very important point. Why? It's the X value where, where the graph changes from, what does this graph ask by itself? A line with the slope of two to a parabola. Good. We got a line going to a parabola. So believe it or not, this is like a little program, right? If X is less than negative two, use this function. Otherwise, when X is greater than or equal to negative two, use this function. We know that the line and the parabola themselves are continuous everywhere, right? But the question is, when they're like running this relay race, the line is running it and he hands the baton off at X equals negative two to the parabola. Are they at the same Y value or not, right? Well, um, there's two ways to do it. The first way we did it in class was to actually graph it. But then we said, hey, is there a better way? Can we do it analytically? Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is where your less than, equal, and greater than come in. So. Let's go ahead and first set up our machinery, right? The analysis. The limit as x goes to negative 2 of f of x, right? f of negative 2, that's the bridge. And then the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the right. Now, I didn't add the minus sign, so I'll come back. Minus plus. There you go, right? Road, bridge, road. Get the notation all squared away. Now, remember, the limit from the left all we have to do is direct substitution and we look for the la, 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 less than piece, right? Left of is less than, and we can use direct substitution. So what do you get when you plug a negative two into the top piece? Negative four plus one, which is negative, negative four plus one, which is negative three. Seguro, boom. All right, now for the bridge, the bridge is like go stand at the point. That's the equals, right? That's the bottom piece. What do you get when you plug a negative two into the bottom? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. You do get a positive four, right? When you square a negative number, it's positive. So, so far, so good. And then the road that goes out on the right-hand side, uh, what's another good color? Um, white? No, not white. Orange. orange. Okay, orange. That's the greater than, right? Row, 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 greater than. Row, 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 right. Row, 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 row your boat. That's a nice asterisk there. I like it. Okay, so what do we get when we plug a negative two into the greater than piece? Well, it's the same as the equal than piece, right? In fact, when you look at the problem, you can tell right away, the right side of the limit and the function value are gonna be the same, okay? Now we've got our analysis. All we have to do is compare those values. They're twinning, right? Do you still call them twins if there's three of them? Call them triplets, but they're twins to each other, right? If there's triplets, but you only take them two at a time, like, hey, I'm your triplet. You don't say that, right? You still say I'm your twin. Twin means matching, but we typically use that for just two people. Triplets are twins as well, right? Quadruplets are twins. Okay. So these are triplets that are twinning. So what do we say? Since or because? Does it matter? No, it matter? no, it doesn't matter. The better word, believe it or not, is because. Since, again, is, is acceptable, but it's, it's typically used for time, right? Since I was a little boy, right, I've enjoyed math. Because negative 3 equals negative 3, like that? Negative equals negative 3. The whole thing, all three of them, all three of them. Check, comma, f or f of x 
is continuous at x equals negative two, boom. So when we eventually test on this, this is the free response, right? Just like on the quiz that we took, you could do this, right? So we got the line that's becoming the parabola and it is a successful baton exchange, right? At negative two. One guy standing where the other guy is standing at the exchange. Perfect. We don't even need to graph it. Comments or questions on that? Connected. Connected is continuous, right? All right. Now look at this one. This one is a piecewise function, but it's got three pieces. This is like a triple headed baby, right? Kind of strange, but still cute, right? No. Oh. Or was it wasn't the dog that, that guarded Hades? Uh, chair, chair, Cerberus. Cerberus. That was a three-headed dog, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got now less than one, equal to one, and greater than one. So piecewise function. Let's go ahead and set up our notation. Uh, I'll use Beefy Brown here. Okay. Yes, sir. Three-headed person would have made sense on the last one since one person has one head and another has two cents. You know, less than than greater than equal to. Okay. I'm sorry. You know what? It, it all year long, if I can just land one analogy that makes sense, I'll be good. Okay. Yeah, my family acknowledges that I make the absolute worst analogies in the entire world, but you know what? With me, it's quantity over quality brady yeah i just go for it if it helps you understand if it sticks then we're good okay um we got the limit as x goes to one from the left of what not f of x but g of x okay that's this guy's name and then we have a g of one and then we got the limit as x goes to one from the right of g of x notation 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 right how important is notation very good. It's like when you're coding, right? And you have just like a, you have just an extra little symbol in the line of code, right? Kind of hard to pick up, but man, it changes. Yeah, it important. changes. It throws everything off, right? Notation, notation. The goal is communication, right? Details matter. All right. I don't know if that was a good analogy or not. Brady, you want to rate them? That was a good analogy. Okay. So on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is the absolute best. Well, We'll just go to Brady all the rest of the year. A seven? Okay, thanks. Good. Coding is a good analogy because I've dealt with code. Absolutely. It is very yeah. difficult to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Details matter. Okay, seven out of ten. I'll take it. Seven out of ten. I'm going to tell my family. Seven out of ten. All right. The limit from the left of one. Which piece do we use? Top, middle, or bottom? Top. Okay. What do you get when you plug in a one? Oh, you get the square root of nine. nine, third, third, nine. Which is different. Yeah, it was just three. We get three. Yeah. Boom. What is G of one? Top, middle, or bottom? Middle. Middle. And look, it just flat out says what? Negative three. Okay. And then the bottom uh, is the greater than. So that's the right side of the limit. What do you get when you plug in a one? Uh, one plus two. Three. Three. Hey, three equals negative three equals three, right? Oh man, that's so close. Outer bounds are three, but the inner bounds are negative. Right. So is it continuous? No, it's a jump continuous. Okay. Well, let's let's hang on to that. What do we say? Do we say it is not continuous? Not f of x. G of x. G of x is not continuous. And I'm printing here instead of cursive, so y'all can read it. At x equals one, comma. So notice we're answering it first, and now the justification second. It doesn't really matter because very good. Three does not equal negative three. Boom. And again, take your pick on which three you want to use. It doesn't matter. Road, bridge, road, they all have to equal each other. Any two don't equal each other, or any one doesn't exist, game over. Okay, now uh, because there is a discontinuity. Let's go ahead and do those two supplemental questions. What would the general limit be as X goes to one of G of X? Does it exist? What is it? It's three. 
because the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. The roads are pointing at each other and they're pointing towards three. Now, what type of discontinuity do we have here? It's, it's actually a hole. Very good. Remember the jump only occurs when the two roads don't line up, okay? Here the roads are lining up. We don't say that we jump from three down to negative three and back up to three to graph it, okay? Um, I just realized that you're learning from a cheese head. It must be hard for y'all today, right? Yeah, so G. <laughs> I'm a cheese head even when I'm not wearing the hat. G of X has a, do we have to say removable point discontinuity? No, we could say whole as long as we know when we say whole, we mean removable point discontinuity. Very good. At, and do we just say at X equals one? No, it's an ordered pair at one comma what? Not negative three. No, negative three is the standalone function value. That's the bridge. The limit value is the Y value of the whole because all we have to do is take the bridge, which is at negative three and put it at three to make it continuous, right? That's why it's removable. So look, if this were a multiple choice question or even a free response, multiple choice would be worse because you don't get any points along the way, right? It's just one check, all or nothing. You do all this work, you get down to here, and then you say G has a hole at one comma negative three. I caramba, I caramba. That is like a bug in the program, right? You spend three weeks writing a program and you get to the end and uh, there's a bug in the program. You're expecting it to run and it doesn't. And now troubleshooting, right? Troubleshooting is almost harder than, right? Because you know what? When you go back through something, whether it's math or code, you're kind of, if it's you doing it and it's you that wrote it, you're kind of following the same mental rut, if you will, that you were originally. And sometimes it's really hard to catch your own mistake. Often it's almost easier just to start anew and work it again, okay? I can catch students' mistakes when they bring it up. I didn't get the right, I can follow, you know, and I can find student mistakes a lot faster than I can find my own, okay? All right, um, so this one does have a, a hole at one comma three. Um, and there you go, it's a three-headed piecewise function. Nothing to fear, right? Nothing to fear at all. So, hello, Allura. Oh, um, we're going to, we're gonna try to finish 2.6, but whatever, I'll record it and put it in the share folder, yeah. And then I'll be ready for like a quiz tomorrow. Yeah, two point six. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe one particle motion question as well. Two point five, and two point five is due tomorrow. Don't forget. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. All right. Um, how are we? Are we warm? Piecewise functions. Nothing to fear, right? Nothing to fear. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and jump to. Um, um, where we left off. We did example eight, yes? Yeah, okay. So now we're on uh, end behavior, okay? And, and I've kind of, uh, I've kind of uh, alluded to this. Um, up to now, we've been taking the limit as X goes to a single finite number. And we've been looking at mainly two-sided limits. But there are two one-sided limits that are very, very, very important. And it's these two guys. The limit as X goes to positive infinity, and the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Now, again, infinity is not a number. So this is like a never ending destination. Whenever we analyze the function as x gets really, really, really big or really, really, really small, we're looking at what's called the end behavior, okay? The end behavior of the graph. When you are approaching an actual finite x value like we've been doing up to now, we call that the local behavior. Local just means relatively small values of X near the origin, okay? That's where all the fun stuff happens locally, right? That's where the vertical asymptotes happen. That's where the, uh, the jumps happen. That's where the holes happen. That's where the X intercepts happen. That's gonna be where the local max and mins happen. The vertices happen. 
that's all local. But the end behavior is very boring. It's very predictable. So if you imagine looking at any graph from above and being like Jeff Bezos, right? Go up into space slowly. What's going to happen? Are you going to be able to see all the local behavior anymore as you zoom out? No, it becomes very small and then pretty soon it disappears. But you could still see the ends of the graph, right? If you looked at some function, you would be able to see the left end and the right end. Okay. So that's what the end behavior is. It's like zooming out and predictably seeing what happens to the graph. And the analysis that we write is this. And these are two one sided limits. You cannot approach positive infinity from the right hand side. That would be weird, right? If you're heading out to positive infinity and you see a guy coming the other way, you're like, dude, how did you get there, right? So these are one-sided limits. We, we kind of mentioned this briefly. Remember when we had our parent function, uh, one over X, this guy here? I talked about the horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero, right? And we looked at it, one over X. As X gets bigger, what happens to its reciprocal? It gets smaller, right? 10 becomes one tenth, 100 becomes 100, a million becomes 1 million. That's the end behavior. We're going out further and further. What's the, yeah, one, one over one, uh, one zillionth? Is that even a number? It's reciprocal is one over one zillionth, which is really, really small. So as we go to infinity here, we're approaching one over infinity. And guess what one over infinity is? It's approaching what? Infinity? No. Oh, zero. It's approaching zero, right? One over infinity is approaching zero, okay? In fact, infinity and zero, believe it or not, are reciprocals of each other. Zero and infinity are reciprocals of each other. Infinity means everything. Yeah. What's the reciprocal of zero? Infinity. And what's the reciprocal of infinity? Zero. Zero, okay? So this would be analyzing the end behavior. We would write this like this, the limit as X goes to infinity of one over X equals zero. That's how we would write it. The limit as X goes to infinity. That means for this graph, as X gets really, 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 really big, one over X, its reciprocal gets really, really small approaching zero. And that's why there's a horizontal asymptote there, okay? So these are two special limits. They're the end behavior limits. And it's very, it's very easy to determine what's happening. Okay, we don't even need the graph. Let's go ahead and look at example nine. Using the graph from example five. Where's example five? Whoa, is it way up here? Was that just where I was at? Yes. Yeah, example five. Okay, so that was this one here. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's go ahead and evaluate those two one sided limits. What would be the limit as x goes to infinity? I have the equation there again. You know what I should do? I should just copy it. Notability allows us to do that. Let's just copy this graph. Do, 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 do. Copy. Man, notability is really a game changer for notes. Yeah, I like it. Um, Everybody I'll paste it. And they're a good company, too. They're very responsive. All right. So there it is. Um, once you have the graph, again, it's really easy. What would be the limit as x goes to infinity of this graph? Zero. Yeah, now you can tell. Hop on the graph. Start heading out to the right. Start approaching infinity. The graph is increasing, isn't it? That graph is increasing, it's going uphill, but it's not increasing going to infinity, is it? No. It's bounded by what appears to be the x-axis, okay? So this is equal to zero. The limit is zero. It's gonna be negative numbers, but they're increasing approaching zero. They're becoming less negative. And then what would be the limit as x goes to positive infinity? Zero. Yeah, hop on the graph and head out to the left, it's going to zero also. I'm going to write this one like that. Those are the two ways to write it, yes? 
next door to it with an equal sign or right below it without an equal sign? They're both zero. Okay. And again, part C, what graphical feature on the graph of f of x, um, it says causes. That's not, I, I need to change that. Um, um, what graphical feature of f of x results because of this? Okay. Yeah. The, the, what, what graphical feature is there? What do we call it? Not the vertical asymptote, the horizontal asymptote. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Ha! Very good, Brady. Ha! There's a horizontal asymptote at, we can use that symbol, at y equals zero. So again, I need to change the wording. The horizontal asymptote doesn't cause the graph to do that. It's the result of the fact that the numbers get smaller, all right? Um, and yes, HA stands for horizontal asymptote. Let's look at this symbol because I, I did say I allowed y'all to use that. That's the what symbol? Yeah, with, with, the, with, with the internet, it's a lot more prevalent because it's on emails, right? at so-and-so, but do you know how it got its evolution? It wasn't always the at symbol. And this is kind of related to limits because at means to stand directly at, right? Like the bridge, the function value. But it originally, it originally meant, what? Yes, it originally meant around. It was originally a round. And you know why it was a round? Yes, very good. It was the letter A, A, and then it was rounded. A round, okay? A, and then circle round. Very good. Vance, are you the one that invented that symbol? No. I mean, you knew that though. It was a round. Very good. I don't know. And then, and then when the internet got a hold of it, it became at, which is fine. Uh, another symbol, this one, this is called the what? Y'all call it hashtag now, right? Right. You know what it was originally? I mean, it's been several things. Tic-tac-toe. You know what it was before the number sign? Pound. Very good. It was the pound symbol. Okay. So symbols can evolve, right? And um, I'm sure in programming, they mean something else, right? You could throw you could throw all kinds of symbols in there. Um, I, I've I've been trying to get this symbol into the English lexicon, a backward H. Uh, Y'all don't like that? Chris doesn't like it. It it hasn't really caught on. But maybe if y'all start using it, y'all are the future of of our great nation. I I was I use this as for however. Chris still doesn't like it. However, I do. Okay. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to do that. Uh, there's another one that that is actually gaining prominence, right? Have you ever seen like a question with an exclamation point? Yeah, I've seen some of those. Yeah. Right. The this has been kind of a portmanteau. It there's actually a use of it that looks like this. Like, I don't know and yeah. And, and it's actually called, so does anyone know its name? The Riddler's Death. I, 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 the Riddler's Death? I used to know the name of it. The Doppel, not the Doppler effect. Hey, Siri. Does anyone have Siri? No, I mean, I technically do. Yeah, turn it on. Yeah, let's see. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to drive me nuts now because it just escaped my mind. Hey, Siri, what is the exclamation point with a question mark called? Um, it's like a doppel. See, what is it doppel keeps entering my mind. Gang stop. Doppel stop. I don't know. It's called something. Yeah, doppelganger is like, yeah. Interrobang. There it is. Bang. That's the word I'm looking for. There you go. And that makes sense because interrogation means the question. And bang means bang. So there it is. That's the interrobang. 
Oh yeah, that's like old. That's like Eth Ethelred, right? If you look at all the old, uh, how is it? There's an E attached to it. Yeah. Yeah, like some of the uh, the old, like yeah, the medieval, the medieval people. The A E sound was the E Ethelred. Anyway, symbols they're kind of nice, right? Whether they're numbers or letters. All right, let's go ahead and define now another asymptote. If the limit as x goes to negative infinity equals L, L is a finite y value. Okay, like zero. And or, okay, the limit as x goes to infinity on the right side equals L. Now, let's put L1 and L2. They don't even have to be equal to each other. The one that we just did, it was. We went out to the left and it approached zero. We went out to the right and approached zero, but it doesn't even have to. You can have two different horizontal asymptotes, all right? Then the function has a horizontal asymptote at y equal L and vice versa. If you know a function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals L, then you know as you go out to the left or right, let's put L1 and or L2. Okay, there can exist one. Let me, let me show you some examples here, all right? Graphically, the first example is the one that we just looked at, one over X. There's a horizontal asymptote right here, one over X. I'm not gonna write the equation. We'll just draw it, horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. Here's another example. We're gonna study this very, very soon enough, exponential. Exponential is a very important function. Uh, especially in programming, because uh, you don't want things to grow very fast. And things that grow exponentially are going to crash a computer program. So uh, here's a, a function that's exponential, and it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, but notice it only affects the graph on one side, okay? You can actually slow down exponential growth with logarithms or you, with polynomials, you can use what's called nested form, which is synthetic substitution. So a lot of programming implications here. Um, the other case is this. You can have up to two horizontal asymptotes. There's a function that we're gonna study in the second semester. It's called arctangent of X. And it looks like this. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals pi halves, and it has another horizontal asymptote at y equals negative pi halves. And someone in the hallways having almost as much fun as we. Okay, so there you go. Is a horizontal asymptote a discontinuity? Does a horizontal asymptote force us to lift our pen or pencil when we draw it? No, a horizontal asymptote is not a discontinuity. There's only one asymptote that is a discontinuity. What type is it? Vertical, because continuity is from left to right, and the vertical asymptote runs north to south, south to north, okay? So this is an end behavior asymptote, okay? It's a type of end behavior asymptote. If you were to zoom out on any of these functions, you would not see any of the local behavior. You would just begin to see the end behavior of the function, okay? So end behavior asymptote. And there's others besides horizontal. You can actually have quadratic, uh, you can have per parabolic asymptotes, you can have cubic asymptotes, you can have exponential asymptotes. All they do, is uh, they kind of tell you what the graph is doing as you go up to either the right or the left end or both, okay? End behavior asymptote. How do we know we have an end behavior asymptote? How do we know we have a horizontal asymptote? When we take the limit as X goes to either infinity or negative infinity, and we end up with a what as an answer? A... Finite y value, yeah. 
Now, some end behaviors don't have finite y values. Like if you just think of a parabola, as x goes to infinity, so do the y values, they go to infinity, right? Yeah, so we're interested with the horizontal asymptotes with the ones that taper off, okay, towards some specific y value. Uh, but those in over L on the first over L? Yeah, on the first Finite y value. I, it says that later. I just wanted to emphasize that. Okay, so we will for sure finish the notes tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow is Tuesday. That means that the worksheet for 2.2 will be due on Wednesday, your half day. Okay, so the notes should be easy to fill out. You've been filling them out as you go. Um, yeah. Oh, the quiz is on like the warm up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was it was example number ten. We haven't got over.